everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual takes us to a regional recipe for beans and greens in a red chili sauce. So we're headed in a vegetable direction and for this recipe, I've kind of put two things together. It's a famous dish called shoneki in the state of Veracruz, which is beans and greens in a red chili sauce, but it's not done as a taco filling. It's served in hearty bowls. In the central part of Mexico, there are lots of people that make tacos out of greens, just greens. So I've kind of pulled those two recipes together to give you the best of the Veracruz beans and greens and the best of what you will find from a lot of street vendors in central Mexico. So the first thing that we have to do is to make a chili sauce. And this is a, if you're not really used to making red chili sauces, this is a great place to start because you're not working with a ton of chilies like you would be if you're going to be making a mole or something like that. So this is an ancho chili. It's the one that's got a sort of dark cranberry color to it. Make sure that they're always flexible when you buy them. If they're completely stiff, they will not have good flavor. I can tell you that. I always loosen the stem end and then just tear that off open the chili up and let the seeds fall out. You don't have to be incredibly meticulous with this part of it. And then I just tear it into flat pieces. I've got three of them here and I'm going to toast them. Now this is an essential part of making a great chili sauce as far as I'm concerned. There are people who won't always toast these, um, but in a lot of New Mexico style chili sauces are made with untoasted chilies. But for me, it's like the difference in flavor between say um, a boiled carrot and a roasted carrot. I always want to go for the roasted carrots because I think they have so much more complexity and sweetness. Now I've got this uh, big skillet. I'm going to do all this cooking in a 12 inch cast iron skillet and I'm pressing them down. I have it heated over medium heat here. I'm pressing them down until I smell them. Now, if it's really hot, they'll begin to burn right away. I have this over a sort of medium heat, not very strong, but I'm smelling this toasty, um, toasty dried chili aroma. And when I see them start to bubble in places, flip over those pieces, press them down again. This shouldn't take more than a minute at, uh, at most. Sometimes if it's a little bit hotter, they will take even less time than that. But use your nose as your guide. You want to smell that toasty dried chili smell. Okay, so now they're all ready here and I'm going to, to take them to rehydrate over to the sink here. Um, and I have a small bowl sitting here. Turn on hot tap water. There's no need to boil water for this. Hot tap water is just fine. And when it is hot, then cover them generously with water, about two cups or so of water. And if they are all poking up because they're floating to the top, just lay a little um, plate on there and it'll keep them submerged. This will take about 20 minutes or so for these to rehydrate. And I'll meet you back here when they're ready. So take a look at these chilies. They look very different than the, the dried version of them. They're completely soft and reconstituted here with the water that we uh, use to soak them. And I'm going to put those into a blender jar. Now the next thing that you need to do is to taste this. Sometimes anchos will have bitterness to them. And so a little taste will tell you whether you to use this or not. This one doesn't have bitterness, so I'm going to go ahead and use it for the blending and the thinning out of this sauce here. But well, let's get the rest of the ingredients together for it. So we're going to flavor this with three really classic ingredients, spices and herbs that go into it. We have cumin, black pepper, and Mexican oregano here. The cumin and black pepper, I'm simply going to pulverize in this small molcajete. So this is um, the kind of molcajete that I always have sitting out because I love the flavor of fresh ground spices here. And once I've got a powder out of these, and I also always keep a small brush on hand to brush out the molcajete. So we'll get those in there and then we'll put in the Mexican oregano. 
that doesn't have to be to be ground up at all it will pulverize nicely we have got a couple cloves of peeled garlic here and just roughly chop that so that it'll blend nicely with everything else about a half a cup now of this soaking liquid so we'll pour that in into the blender jar and if that's not quite enough to keep everything moving through the blades then just add a little bit more of that soaking liquid here we go now i'm using a high speed blender here um, and it's very powerful and will chop up all of the skins of the chilies but if you're using a less powerful blender this next step you may want to first strain all of this to collect any little seeds or bits of skin that didn't get thoroughly blended because we're the next step here is to cook this down until it's the consistency of tomato paste so i'm going to first film the skillet still over kind of a medium heat here um, with enough oil just to coat the bottom it'll take a couple of tablespoons there um, tip that around just so that it's evenly done there i want to make sure that it's hot um, and that sizzle is what i'm looking for so in goes all of this this chili puree here and then we're going to stir this for just a couple of minutes until it darkens in color and it reduces like to the consistency of tomato paste so just stand here and stir it now just look at what the consistency and color of that is now this is an absolutely essential step in creating the perfect flavor for a red chili sauce um, what we are doing here is to bring out sweetness in it and to balance any astringency or raw flavor that you would have in that chili sauce. And it's a very quick cook, but it's at a fairly high temperature and you're reducing everything down and it just brings all the flavors perfectly together. We're going to add now to it a cup and a half, which is just exactly what I have there of the the soaking liquid you could use water if your soaking liquid is uh, or chicken broth if you if you want to use that um, uh, but we went to this was a nice sweet soaking liquid so we're going to reinforce the chili flavor with that i'm going to bring it to a simmer here and then we're going to season this guy with salt um, it takes a little more than you would think for a red chili sauce especially because this one's going to have beans in it so it's got to be fairly highly seasoned so i'm going to put in a teaspoon and a half of salt and i'm using here the diamond crystal salt um, you know, it's a little bit fluffier in the spoon than, say, if you were to use a regular iodized salt. And now I'm going to taste what this is like again. Let me stir the, the sauce just to make sure that um, the salt has evenly distributed through it. And... Mm. So now what I'm looking for is to make sure that it's nicely seasoned, which it is. It took that one and a half teaspoons of salt, but there's a lingering bitterness. So for that, because of that, I am going to put just a pinch, literally a big pinch of sugar in here, which will give me that really beautiful balance without making this sauce sweet, but it'll taste beautifully balanced. Now I don't get that sort of bitterness or astringency that I got the first taste of it. Now let's talk about the greens. If you were in Mexico, you would be choosing usually between three different greens. The ones that are called quelites, which we call lamb's quarters in English. The ones that are called quintoniles, which we call amaranth greens in the United States, or Swiss chard. Those are the three things that you will find in the markets usually. But the quelites and the quintoniles are usually not sold where you find the Swiss chard sold. Swiss chard is a European ingredient that's sold in the great big stalls of vegetables where you'll find the uh, amaranth greens and the, the um, lamb's quarters. 
uh, sold by people who collect things in the wild. And that's what I'm always looking for because I love both of those flavors very, very much. You can find amaranth greens a lot of times in Asian grocery stores in the U.S. And you can find the lamb's quarters oftentimes at a farmer's market. We're to a rolling boil now. I am going to use one of my favorite greens of all time, and that is Lacinado kale or black kale is oftentimes called. And I have just, you can see here, just pulled the bottom stem off. That's the thickest part of the stem. And then I'm gonna cut crosswise here at about half inch increments. And then put all of that, I've got eight cups. This is about one bunch, about an eight ounce bunch. And it makes a sort of fluffy eight cups here. And I'm gonna put these in here. If you're using the lamb's quarters or the amaranth greens, my suggestion to you is just simply take off the stem and cut them in about half inch segments and you'll be fine. Same thing with Swiss chard. And Swiss chard is very easily available in most grocery stores in the United States. Push it all down there. I don't have a, a top for my 12 inch skillet, maybe you do. Um, so I will put a sheet pan on the top of that and we're gonna let that cook for about eight minutes or so. That's about how long it will take to make that green tender. Everything is going to be, every green is going to be different. The lamb's quarters will take about as long as the, the lacinado kale. Um, and I will say that the quintoniles will take less time, about five minutes or so. You could even do this with spinach if you want to, but boy, it'll just sort of come to a, a simmer. You'll let it go for a minute or so, and that's long enough to cook spinach. That cooks really, really fast. But I'll meet you back here when this lacinado kale is tender. All right, let's see what we got here. It's reduced a little bit. Um, I'm gonna stir it. Yeah, it's reduced a little bit, but the, the kale is feeling to me like it's really close to done. Uh, you might want to have this be a little bit crunchy because we got a little bit more cooking to go here. Mm. Oh, it's just right tender. Okay, last thing, two cans of black beans to go in here and I'm you see that I'm doing it juice and all here when I was younger we used to always say that you never you always wanted to rinse the beans that came out of a can because they had a tinny flavor to them um, but that's not the case anymore because the cans like this are coated with something that makes them very, um, it protects the food that's in there. So we'll stir those beans in with the greens. And now we're gonna let this reduce until it holds its shape, just the, what you would expect to have for a taco filling. We don't want any runny taco fillings. Take a look at this. I wish you could smell it because it just smells so delicious. That red chili sauce, you get the smell of the sweetness of the beans and then you can see all of the greens that are in there. This is about what I want it to be. Um, if you take it much, much beyond this, then um, it'll start to be kind of pasty in the, the taco. So I've got some warm tortillas here. So I'll show you how we can build a couple of tacos here. So I'm just gonna lay those out like that. Now this is um, going to be hot, so I'll put that down there and bring it closer over here. So take one spoonful of the mixture to go on there and another one. And what I like to put on this, you could do it with hot sauce if you want to have a stronger red chili flavor here. I think it's got enough, but I like the contrast of queso fresco here. This is the homemade queso fresco that we do at our restaurant, but you can buy queso fresco at your Mexican grocery stores or a well-stocked grocery store. But another version of a fresh cheese could be delicious here too. You could do um, shred goat cheese or maybe some feta crumbles. Those are fresh cheeses that will be absolutely delicious on this. 
It's a homey flavor. Um, certainly, when, if you're looking for more meatless things to make at home, this is incredibly satisfying. So I encourage you to make the red chili beans and greens into tacos. Thank you.